Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know about all that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know about all that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you're very kind. <laughs> you're very kind. Thank you. I, I, I would love to live up to some portion of what Regis just said. Regis, I thank you and I call to mind my first year Latin, Regis, Rex Regis, third declension, from king. But Regis is the genitive case, meaning of the king. So that's real close. Thank you very much. Regis, uh, Regis and I have had Hayes as a sort of, pardon me if I'm nervous, I'll explain that to you too. Let me just begin again. That'll be the easiest thing for me to do. Uh, first of all, Monsignor Jablonski. Monsignor McCormick, members of the dais, honored guests, and of course, all of you, the assembled alumni, loyal sons and true. That's right, march on, loyal sons and true. But may I say tonight, uh, we don't mind if you want to march on, that will be fine, but we hope that no one will hurl his challenge to the sky. Tonight is not the night to hurl your challenge to the sky. You might want to hurl it in the ashtray. You might want to hurl it at your friend, but no hurling challenges to the sky tonight. Try to act right as if the priests were watching. <laughs> now, now, I feel all right. <clears throat> Before I get too far along, I would like to make one confession. Certainly this is an appropriate place to do it. What I wish to say is that although my business, thank you very much, sir, I consider everything a compliment, don't you? Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll try. Can't hear? Okay. This sounds like one of my shows. I will try a little harder. You weren't having trouble with the others, and I've sort of like learned to do this over the years. <laughs> I'll try harder. Uh, what I want to say is that I'm a little bit nervous about this. This is not the kind of thing I normally do. Although I'm in show business, and there are lots of testimonials and dinners and tributes uh, to however deserving people. It's not the segment of show business I find myself in, and I'm a little uncomfortable. I just want you to know that. I have notes here, I have a little light, and I have a sound system from the Archdiocese of New York. Although it is true that I am here tonight primarily to help celebrate Monsignor Jablonski's introduction, uh, induction, forgive me. Uh, by the way, could I straighten out this name thing right away for myself? Because I'm, I'm not really comfortable with the phrase Monsignor Jablonski. You know, I mean, I'm very happy with the promotion. I'm sure he looks nice in the two-tone. But the phrase Monsignor Jablonski does not come trippingly off my tongue. Uh, there were lots of names for you at the time, as you're well aware. I, I was once asked in the second floor bathroom, how many bees in Jabbo? <laughs> Among the few I'm able to repeat, I remember him being known as the Mean Dean, the Sinister Minister, and, of course, Stan the Man. But for my purposes tonight, I would like to call you Father Jablonski. That is what I got used to. Uh, if you don't mind the temporary setback, that's the way it'll be. Now, to continue, although it's true that I came here primarily for this reason, I must say that there's another as important reason to me, and that is, and by the way, Father, this is the first award in this Hall of Fame, you know? It's not like they had to really look for someone. <laughs> You're the first. 
the first. 30 or 40 years from now, this honor may not mean anything. But tonight, this year, Jabbo, this is a goddamn good award. <laughs> Believe me. Now. By the way, that will be the only time tonight you will hear me use any swear words or... or well. A little earlier when we were milling, I think we were milling around back there, some guys were asking me, they said, hey, Colin, hey, Colin, you going to do the seven dirty words? Go ahead, man, it's 1983. The priests are liberal. Bullshit. So I lied, too. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm not here for that purpose tonight. I'm not only here to honor Monsignor Jablonski tonight, but I'm here to celebrate my own nostalgia. My nostalgia for Hayes and for all the people of Hayes, the fathers and the brothers and the students, the ladies that worked in the cafeteria, member of Frankfurters and the mashed potatoes, Remember all that hot fudge? I would get a lot and lot and lot and lot and lot and lot and lot of hot fudge. Almost ruined me. And Manny's and Fat Mary's and the trains that came by just when you were trying to think of an answer. See, when I think of Hayes, Father Jablonski is just one of my symbols. And tonight I want to take this opportunity to share with you a number of my Hayes memories. Father Jablonski, of course, being just part of them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that I didn't have a lot of contact with him. <laughs> Believe me, we met far too frequently for my taste. But first things first. As we gathered around earlier this evening, some of the guys were saying to me, and we were, by the way, trying to figure out what in the hell we were doing at Mount St. Michael without the football team. <laughs> Some of the guys were saying, hey, Colin, I'm class of 53. What year were you? That's a big thing in these meetings, you know. What year were you? Well, I gave them my usual answer. I said, well, if I would have graduated, I would have been class of 55. And uh, that's, that's the way it is with me. That's the way it is with dropouts. I would have been the class of 55. Of course, by the time my original class from St. Bernard's or St. Bernard's, depending on which side of Manhattan you came from, were graduating in June of 55 and somehow managing to sneak a cigarette outside of St. Patrick's Cathedral, I was already in Shreveport, Louisiana, repairing airplanes. Now you say, what's a dropout doing here tonight? Well, I don't want you to feel that way. After all, if it wasn't for the dropouts, who would hire the PhDs? Anyway, in my case, it's important that you understand that during my abbreviated career at Hayes, a year and a half or three full semesters, and even though I wound up not finishing from two other distinguished New York high schools, Bishop Dubois and the wonderful George Washington, and was turned down by still two more in spite of that record. By the way, those two were music and art and performing arts. They didn't want me either. But in spite of all of that, Cardinal Hayes has always been and always will be officially my high school of record, and let me tell you why, okay? Now, the best test of this fact, by the way, is that even to this day, when I'm on the road in some small town watching TV on a fall afternoon and a football game comes on between two teams I never heard of, like West Missouri State and Idaho Tech. And I can't imagine who I might want to root for. The entire issue is solved when one of the teams, maybe South Vermont, comes running out onto the field in the Cardinal and Gold uniforms. Hey, it's all over. I'm already dead. I mean, blue and white, 
black and silver, green and gold, not even flesh tone and khaki. None of the other combinations ever have a chance with me except cardinal and gold. At least that's what they said it was. I had a sneaking suspicion it was really red and yellow. But who would want to win one for the red and yellow? Now, when I speak of the cardinal and gold like this, I don't want you to think I'm going to get super sentimental. I'm not going to talk about Coach Crywicky sending in Pepe La Monica. I'm not going to mention block that kick, block that pass, knock that quarterback on his rip, 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 rap, 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 haze high, haze high, clap, clap, clap. I'm not going to mention sitting in Triborough Stadium during a timeout, counting the cars in a railroad train which was going by just above the people from Brooklyn Prep or Power Memorial or Chaminade. <laughs> and the reason I'm not going to mention those things is because, let's face it, at best, most of us carry on a love-hate relationship with any school we attend, and I had my share of the hate. I hated intermediate algebra. I hated second year Latin. I hated homework. I hated jug. And worst of all, I hated the 149th Street Crosstown bus. <laughs> Had you worried there for a minute, eh, Jabo? <laughs> but with all this talk now, all this loose talk about love and hate, let it be said that in all these 30 years of looking back, I have always had not only a sense of pride, but a certain arrogance about being a Hayes man. Because after all, to a lot of people, and especially when I can think back to, going to Hayes was absolutely the coolest thing you could do coming out of eighth grade. It was the coolest. It was the coolest school. All of the coolest guys went to Hayes. I learned that from my brother, Pat, class of 48. Pat was six years older than I was, and I looked up to him. I had to. He was taller. But also, he was a cool guy. My brother was cool. He could dance good. He could fight good. He could talk his ass off on the corner. And he went to Hayes. And as far as I was concerned, from my vantage point in fourth or fifth grade, Cardinal Hayes was unquestionably the coolest high school you could go to. My brother even claimed that you could make out better if you went to Hayes. And I believe it. <laughs> I think at any parish dance, like in my area was Blessed Sacrament or Lady of Lourdes or Good Shepherd Dance, a guy from Hayes could pick up a girl much faster than anybody from Regis or Xavier. <laughs> Definitely. And so when I chose Hayes, it was partly for that reason, making out, and partly because they had a great marching band. The great band. How many guys were in that band at one time or another? I know one for sure, Kiernan is here. But now before you get the idea that my, again, I'm reading this if it sounds a little stilted. These are my thoughts, but they're written out. Before you, you get the idea that my reasons for choosing Hayes were somewhat shallow, let me hasten to add that of course the most important reason overriding all the others for attending Hayes was the fact that the passing mark was only 65. <laughs> And that was important to me because I was one of those guys who didn't try too hard in school. I didn't really try that hard, at least not all the time. I would pick my spots. You know, I was one of those guys that heard that phrase over and over in my education. All through school, that one certain phrase, I'm sure you heard it from the nuns, from the brothers, from the priests. First of all, they would call you by name. Mr. Carlin. Mr. Carlin, isn't it amazing that as soon as you get in trouble, suddenly you're a grown-up? <laughs> Mr. Carlin? And then there was that phrase that I heard, You have a good head, but you're not using it. And they'd smack you on the head just to get it started for you. <laughs> oh, yes. But, even worse than getting smacked, was when a teacher would ridicule you in front of the class. I hated that. Colin, stand up, Colin. Class, Colin isn't interested in the future blue perfect. 
Carlin has something so important he had to tell it to Kavanaugh. And now he's going to tell it to the rest of us. Is it that right, Carlin? Yeah. Huh? Oh, yes, brother. And just what was it that was so important? I said, uh, Brother Ambrose looks like an unborn monkey. Very humorous, Carlin. Do you suppose Father Jablonskis could use some company this afternoon? I don't know, brother. Carlin, you've got a good head on you, but you're not using it. And it wasn't completely true because I was using my head for at least one thing besides growing hair and keeping my pimples all in one place. I was using my head to blow into a trumpet. That's right, I actually was for a short time, one semester, a member of the Cardinal Hayes High School Championship Marching Band. One hundred and twenty men with five tubas. I still remember the first year that they put the cloth cover on the tubas and everybody said, look, it spells something. I started in the band in first year at St. Bernard's when Mr. McGrath came down, used to travel down to indoctrinate the newcomers on 13th Street and I chose trumpet because we happened to have one at home. I think my brother had stolen it during the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I really wanted to play a stringed instrument, but they told me yo-yo was out. So trumpet it was for me. And when I moved on to the main building, I became a member of the marching band under the direction of Father Zemak. Now, Father Zemak, now that was an experience. I once saw Father Zemak give a kid an entire clarinet lesson in his sleep. Not the kid's sleep, Father Zemak's sleep. And any time the hit kid hit a wrong note, Father Zemak's foot came out and went, Poof. Be natural. Well, he must have been sleeping when he let me in the band, I'll tell you that. I mean, I liked music and I understood it all right, but I quickly found out that it is absolutely impossible to read music, play the trumpet, and march intelligently at the same time. So I took the easy way out. I marched intelligently and never played a note. Third trumpet, they didn't miss me. My reasoning was, people can see me marching, but no one can hear me not playing. And I would like to make my apologies to the 1952 football team for not supporting them fully. I did attend all the games in my uniform. Didn't play a note. I didn't play the Thunderer. I didn't play the Washington Post. I did, however, take part in several cheers, such as Knit One, Curl Two, Iona Prep, Woo Woo! So much for my band career. I did have it, they called it advanced band. I always thought that was humorous. Fourth period, just before lunch, and I want you to know that, believe it or not, when I was home last week struggling with this script, I found my original program card. This is my original program card from Hayes in 1952, and uh, apparently the diocese was buying pretty good cardboard then because this thing is held up rather nicely. You could, you could use this again. But now here it is, first period was geometry. I loved geometry because it didn't seem like math. You know, it was more like art. Try to make a triangle fit on another triangle. That makes a lot of sense. I had Brother Jude for geometry. Brother Jude was very good at ridiculing, but he was also very good at teaching, may I say. I really did well in geometry. Latin, too. Second year Latin was next. I had Father McCaffrey, and unfortunately, I was not big in a translation. I guess first year Latin was fine, but Latin, too. I think Father McCaffrey had my number. That's what it was. Then third, third period, I had world history, and I had this uh, Father McCormick. <laughs> yeah. Third period, I had world history, 
and I had this uh, Father McCormick. <laughs> yeah. Andiamo, gentlemen, andiamo, andiamo, gentlemen. The only Italian word you knew, right? <laughs> but he used it effectively. I did well in that. He looked at my record the other day. I did fairly well. He, uh, he did say one thing when I t talked to the Monsignor about this affair tonight. He said, I remember you, Colin. You sat near the wall. <laughs> the sum and substance of my career at Hayes. I sat near the wall. <laughs> the better to conceal my nefarious activities. <laughs> now the rest of this program card, then came Advanced Band, which as I say was lots of fun. I sat near the drums. That was always fun. Then we had homeroom, Father Conroy, and uh, they had me uh, fifth period late lunch. And like I say, lots of hot dogs, lots of hot fudge, lots of acne. Then Father Conroy for religion. And religion was always fun because we were getting into high school now. In grammar school, mostly the Catholic religion, the teaching is that that's a sin, don't do it. But as you get a little older and they feel they can trust you with little details, they begin to say, well, sometimes, under certain circumstances. And that's when the wise guys move in. You know what I mean? And we would make up these questions, make up these ridiculous questions. Say, Father, would this be a sin? Father, would it be a sin if suppose you didn't make your Easter duty yet and there's only one day left and you're out on a, a ship at sea and you really want to receive but the priest is in a coma and you wanted to receive but then he wakes up and it's too late but then you cross the international date line and it's yesterday. Would that be a sin, Father? Yeah. <laughs> so. <clears throat> then I had English. <laughs> I liked that the best and I kept failing it because you had to do a book report to pass. I could do the quiz all right, but I was just too cheap to buy the classic comic. And then, my final period of the day, room 117, Jug! Jug for George! Yeah, this thing says my home room was 339. I knew much better than that. 117, I spent a lot of time there, and I never got, I never sat down, of course, you couldn't sit down, but I never got out of Jug. You know, you could never get out of that. You could get out of something, but you couldn't get out of Jug. Even if you had an after-school job. Say, but father, I got a job after school. You should have thought of that when you started fooling around. <laughs> now, usually your teacher sent you to Jug, but occasionally you might get nabbed in the hallway by Father Jablonski himself. He used to cruise the hallways. You remember this with sometimes, not with the cape usually indoors. The cape, I think, was an outdoor thing. <laughs> but coming down that hallway as quietly, that's where the sinister minister came in had nothing to do with being left-handed, just that he would cruise quietly down the hall. And there was this pose, you've often seen this pose. A little Jack Benny in it, but not bad. And he might nail you himself. Now he used to, like I say, he'd come down the hallway. A lot of priests and brothers stood like that because I didn't think they had uh, pockets in the cassocks at that time. That's why I thought it was. But uh, Father Jabonski, I've got to tell you my most memorable, that's why we're here. Forgive me for going on about myself, but I must share with you my love for Hayes because I haven't seen any of you like this under any circumstances. And, and Father Jablonski is an intimate part of this. My most memorable Father Jablonski moment. Imagine that. I have Father Jablonski moments. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them is more memorable than the others. He was doing the hallway one day, and our classroom was in some sort of uproar, the teacher wasn't there, and everybody was yelling, throwing things, hitting your friend with a book, grabbing stuff, throwing things against the blackboard, a lot of noise going on. And Father Jablonski came by and he saw one perpetrator, the one who seemed to be in charge, and he just leaned in the room in that way of his and he said, Walsh, 
Bring your mother in the morning. And then he sailed away, he sailed away a few feet, and I said, Walt, bring your mother in the morning. And he looked right back in and he said, Colin, bring your mother and your father in the morning. So how do I wind this up? I think this way. We're here to induct Father Stanislaus Jablonski into the Alumni Association Hall of Fame, and if you're asking me, I say do it. If it's just based on popularity alone, I say do it. You can't run into a Hayes graduate anywhere in the world without him saying, remember Jabbo? Everybody that ever went to Hayes, even to deliver things, has a Jabbo story to tell you. Let me tell you what Jabbo did to me one time. So just based on that alone, I say do it. On behalf of that silent student body that didn't finish high school, I say do it. Anyone who can get me into a suit belongs in the Hall of Fame. That's the way I feel. And... And if I were you, Father, I'd accept. They may not feel this way next year. Thank you. See you later. Incidentally, I knew George's mother very well. She was a visitor to my office. A wonderful, and I'm not saying that because he's here. I told him this before. A wonderful lady. And when I found out that George would be here tonight, I said to Father McCormick, make sure you invite his mother. His mother is not well. She's getting over a stroke. And uh, George, I want to send my best to your mother. I have had her in my mass every day since I heard she was ill, and I will continue to do so in the future. And now, this is a trademark of the disciplinarian's office, and he's going to get it. It's a teacher's record of a detention slip. Thank you. Yes, it certainly is. Should I read it, or should I let George read it? The teacher's record, detention, name, George Carlin, homeroom, 2T. Geez, you could have given them a better homeroom. That was a weak homeroom, wasn't it, 2T? Absent from Hayes for many years. The reason. Another one, George Carlin, reason. He thinks he is a comedian, Monsignor Jablonski. <laughs> George Carlin, the reason, a joker. And he did a good job on me. And I appreciate it. I loved it. God bless you, George. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. There's a little John Smith. Thank you. Good. God bless. You. And I would give you that, but I think he's going to present you with that. Okay. But with okay. all my good wishes. Okay, good. good. I don't know. It's okay. See, you know, I'm going to be. How old are you, brother? I always figure out how old I am by how old my brother is. I'll be 68. That's right, okay. I put some of that greasy stuff on my hair tonight and coming out, and everything seems to slip my mind. Ha, 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 ha. All right, now. I want to give Father McCormick a, a check. I am a firm believer in this that it is a far better thing to give than to receive. And while I receive the honor of this induction, the plaque, and the emotion, the nice feelings, while I take all that, I want to give something. I want to give the Cardinal Hayes a check 
for $1,000. I wish it could be more, but without Cardinal Hayes, there could have been and there would have been no Jabbo. On behalf of the Cardinal Hayes Alumni Association, we'd like to present this award to Monsignor Jablonski as the first inductee to the Hall of Fame for Cardinal Hayes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, before Monsignor leaves, we have one other presentation. Peter Bartosek of the class of 1959, seven. seven, see, that's that old greasy stuff on my hair again, wants to present me with a plaque. I'm very sorry that my parents are not here tonight because they would enjoy this one. It comes from the Pulaski Association of the Police Department, the city of New York. Reverend clergy, Regis, George, our honored guest, Monsignor Jablonski, Dear friends of the class of 1957 and all you